Okay guys, so the company which we are going to talk about today or on which we are going to do our discounted cash flow detail analysis as you might have seen from the title as well is none other than Alibaba Group Holding Limited. And why this company? Well guys, because according to me, in my opinion, this company has come under a really attractive valuation. But again guys, I'm not any kind of a financial advisor. So consider this video as a part of your own due diligence and then move on to consider this company as an investment if you think so okay guys so before we move on to our discounted cash flow model i would just like to clarify a few things so first of all i would like to just talk shortly about the quarter for recent quarter for earnings for alibaba and also why alibaba has been losing its market value and both of these topics are actually interrelated because we have been seeing that alibaba reporting an operating loss for the first time in eight years or alibaba missing the revenue estimates or earnings estimates so Let's talk about it and you can have an idea why it's actually happening and why actually this company is becoming more and more attractive for me. So guys, one of the reasons why Alibaba is losing its market value or the market capitalization on the market is because Chinese government recently has been attacking all these anti-competitive practices and one of the targets was also this giant food delivery services called Mutin which is one of the third largest food delivery service in China and of course the other one was Alibaba because of this they also faced a fine of 2.8 billion dollars because of some alleged infringements and summoning of 34 leading online platforms to regulators offices where the firms were actually warned beforehand about abusing their growing market and all this mess is happening because of a new chinese antitrust law that means the businesses should not say statements like choose one from the two you know because of the competition they should not be doing these practices these are illegal practices according to the chinese government and that's what is happening with all these online businesses e-commerce businesses that they are using some anti-competitive practices which are actually in my opinion not that anti-competitive i mean there will be competition but okay according to chinese government these are not according to the law these practices are not practiced according to the law of chinese antitrust law like they say so this is one of the most important reasons why these e-commerce businesses from china are getting this hard hit so we have to know the reason before we jump on to the analysis okay guys so first let's quickly talk about the recent quarterly earnings report from alibaba and we might have seen many headlines like alibaba missing the revenue estimates or earnings estimates or alibaba posting the first operating loss since 2012 so look at this sales actually jumped 78 percent higher year over year and landing at 28.6 billion dollars earnings increased from 1.3 dollar per share to 1.58 dollar per share and analysts were expecting earnings to be roughly around 1.79 with a revenue estimate of 28.1 billion dollars so just look at this guys actually they beated the revenue estimates from the analyst but what happened so the reason behind booking and operating loss is because recently as we know that alibaba had to pay a fine of 2.8 billion antitrust fine by chinese regulators for abusing its market dominance over merchants and rivals so guys this is the main reason why they had to book an operating loss 2.8 billion dollars is not a small amount so they were supposed to get an operating profit of 1.6 billion dollars approximately if they wouldn't have to pay this hefty fine so this is the main reason guys why they actually missed the earnings estimates or they booked an operating loss so as you already saw that they are actually growing at a really good growth rate and if you see this as a reason to just dump your shares or to forget about Alibaba, then guys, to be honest, that's a really bad decision. Anyways, I don't want to blabber about the earnings report, the quarter four earnings report so much because I would literally have to make this video up to 40 minutes or so. So this was the general overview which I wanted to give you guys before I jump onto my analysis because this is a really important point, how the business is actually performing based on the quarter four results, missing the earnings estimate means nothing to me in case of alibaba for now so anyways apart from that now let's just jump on to our main content okay guys so here we are on our discounted cash flow template for alibaba and i have already put in some numbers but i will explain all the numbers step by step so let's just jump into this right away because this might take a lot of time so yeah so first of all we are having here some of our assumptions so these assumptions are quite important because based on these we will get some of these numbers below so 
let's just see for example if you go into the formulas and if we trace dependence so you can see that our tax rate will be affecting the less cash taxes and the tax rate here so similarly we have other numbers here as well so if we just go to remove arrows and we put on the discount rate so if you go into the discount rate which is quite an important number and if you trace the dependence so you can see that this will also affect our enterprise value which is the intrinsic value and the perpetual growth rate so anyways so that's how the complete template is formulated they are the formulas driven by other factors so let's start with tax rate first so tax rate is actually how much taxes the company is paying now generally many people put like 25 percent capital tax 24 percent capital tax but we will calculate this tax and for that we will go on to the financials of the company okay guys so to calculate the tax rate what we actually need is the financials of the company so just type the 10k company finances of alibaba in this case or as a matter of fact any other company you can put just type in in google like for example tesla 10k filings and you will get the financials of the company so what we are looking in for here is the income tax expenses yeah and we are looking for the income before the taxes so that's how we will calculate how much taxes the company is paying so in that case i will just quickly pull out the calculator so here's the calculator and I will just simply divide the income tax expenses for let's say year 2019 16.553 divided by the income before the taxes 96.221 and that means we have a percent of 17% so 17% is approximately our tax rate and that's how we calculate the tax rate okay guys so to calculate our weighted discount rate because that's one of the most accurate way to get the discount rates we need the total debt so I just jumped on to the balance sheet of Alibaba and here is the total debt so this is what we need and then if we just move on to the statistics so to get the number of shares outstanding to get the market cap we have here the number of shares outstanding 2.71 billion and of course you can simply always go to the summary and take the market cap from here so these are the few things which we need for the weighted discount rate calculation so after we put our debt total debt and the market cap is automatically calculated by the share price and the number of shares outstanding so yeah the share price i forgot to tell you of course from yahoo finance you can take so the current price was 230 dollars and then we get our total debt and the total debt to market cap and then debt to equity ratio percentage so we get all these numbers automatically yeah then the next thing what we have to calculate in order to get a good discount rate a perfect discount rate is to calculate the cost of equity and for the cost of equity we first have to calculate the risk free rate so the risk free rate what we can actually get is just take the 10 year bond yield rate so i just typed the us government bonds 10 year yield rate and we have this number right here 1.5 in that case i will just take 1.5 percent as my risk free rate so here i have put 1.6 percent so let's maybe change it to 1.5 percent or 1.5 percent right so we can see that this got affected so this is our risk-free rate yeah this is the risk-free return what we can get from our bond yields now we have equity risk premium so equity risk premium how we can get that we can simply just take the average S&P 500 return of over 5 to 10 years and we can see that the average S&P 500 return is approximately 10% so in order to get our equity risk premium what I will simply do is that I will take that 10% return of our S&P 500 the average return and I will simply deduct that from risk free rate and then I get 8.5% equity risk premium so that's a rule of thumb how you can actually calculate the equity risk premium and I think that's logical so then we have to check the beta value and of course beta means that how much volatility the stock price is experiencing with respect to S&P 500 so this we can also take from Yahoo Finance so again going to the statistics tab and we can find the beta value right here so five year monthly the beta value is just 0.82 which is quite nice to be honest and you can find all the key figures right here which are almost calculated and given to you 
first hand of course if you need raw numbers then you just have to go to the financials so putting this value back into our template so now when we put this beta value we get our cost of equity which is 8.47 percent so to get the final discount rate we have to just calculate the cost of debt that means how much interest the company is paying on their debt and to get that number we just have to go again back to the financials so to calculate the cost of debt is quite simple again so coming back onto the financial statements and go on to the income statement and here we can see the interest expense right here so i will not take the trailing 12 month period i will take the last year yeah 2020 so here i will take 5.18 billion dollars the interest expense and just simply divide this by their total debt so going on to the balance sheet and again we would we will take for 2020 because we are taking for 2020 and the total debt was 147 billion dollars so what we essentially get here is just simply dividing the interest expense by the total debt and that makes sense because we are calculating here how much interest they are paying on their total debt and that comes out to be around 3.5 percent so we finally put here the cost of debt 3.5 percent and our tax rate from here was already 17 percent which was automatically entered here when we first time entered it here and this gives our 7.4 percent of weighted average cost of capital which is also called the discount rate so guys here is how we actually get the most perfect discount rate without just googling it and just putting an approximate value because of the bond yield rate triple a bond yield rate return and just approximately putting 7.5 percent with the gdp growth and yeah so that's this is a much better calculation taking everything into consideration so now our next tab right here is the perpetual growth rate so perpetual growth rate simply means that at what rate we expect that the cash flow positive cash flow of the company will grow over the next 10 years 20 years 30 years like in forever yeah and to get this we can take two factors into consideration so first of all the average GDP growth rate so we have average GDP growth rate of around 1.67 percent over the last 10 years this is for like from 1870 till 2018 but we can also take for last 10 years but I will take a more conservative approach here so 1.67 percent is of course really less the average 10 year GDP growth for the US economy was around 2.5 percent but anyways so and then we take the triple a bond yield rate which is approximately 2.94 percent for corporate bond rates so then i take the average mean and we get a value of around 2.3 to 2.4 percent now i will enter this value back into our system so i will put here 2.5 percent but again guys like i said this is being more conservative yeah because let's say if the gdp performs better right 2.5 percent or let's say 3 percent 3.54 percent and also the bond yield rates are increasing then we can get here maybe 3 percent 3.5 percent or even more yeah so i am being here a bit conservative so let's keep here 2.5 percent and then let's move on so moving on to our next tab which is the ev to ebitda multiple so for ev to ebitda multiples just simply type on google and then you can get on to any of the sites for example here guru focus and we take the median value of 26.5 if you want to make a more and more conservative just calculation just take the minimum value and on the other hand just take the maximum value and you can get your intrinsic value changes so we will enter this value right back to our template i have entered the value right here and then we have the transaction date and the fiscal year end date so the transaction date at on the date when you are calculating the intrinsic value for a particular company so i am i'm making this video on 4th of may so i have put 4th 5th to 2021 and the fiscal year end for alibaba is in march so that's why i have put here march i should put march so sorry not April so March and then we get these uh, numbers right here so you can see that the entry was done on 4th of May and then these are the following years for which we will calculate the discounted cash flow 
and then the current price is of course 230 which we already needed for our market capitalization and then last but not the least for our assumptions we have to take the capex now how to calculate the capex so for the capex or the capital expenditures just go over to the financials and then the cash flow and then here you can see under the cash flow from investing activities and here you will find the capital expenditures so what I generally do is or what other analysts are doing is just taking the average of the last four or five years of the capital expenditures and I have come up with a number so here it is the average of all the four years what we just saw so 5.25 billion dollars so this is the capital expenditure and this is our final assumption what we had to make and as you can see right here that there are some numbers right here changing but now let's move on to our discounted cash flow table so the first thing here is the EBIT and for the EBIT I simply go onto the market screener and I type here Alibaba or the ticker and here you can see here the EBIT operating profit so operating profit is simply called as EBIT so here you can see well, there are some analyst numbers for year 2021 2022 and 2023 as well so that makes our work much easier and we don't have to make some assumptions from our side we do have great analysts and they have predicted the EBIT for coming two more years so just simply take this number 112 billion for 2021 142 billion for 2022 and 188 billion for 2023 and entering those numbers back to our excel template so i have already entered these numbers but just in order to show you that how and what values are affected so i will just simply skip here putting nothing yeah and i'll just copy back the number right into that cell so when i put here this number back again then we will see that we have the less cash taxes so you can see right here we have the less cash taxes right here now we have already for 2022 and 2023 thanks to the analysts out there but we have to assume and calculate for 2024 and 2025 by our own so how to do that okay so in order to get those two futuristic uh, numbers so what we will simply do is let's make a cell here below the year 2023 equals to this number right here divided by this number right here and we get one we don't need one so we will just simply go to home and we make it at as a percentage and if we just yeah so we approximately have 31.8 percent if we just round it up so 31 per 31 32 percent of growth rate and then if we go from equals to this one divided by this one so again one and percentage and oh wrong cell sorry so home and percentage so 27 percent so if we just go on to two decimal places yeah 27 percent approximately and now what i will simply do is taking this number right here and subtracting this by this so we get 30 billion and similarly this number right here and subtracting this by this right here and we get 45 billion and then therefore to calculate the growth of rate change we just simply take again this number right here and divide it by this number right here and we get okay one again so just to convert it into percentage so we get around 48 percent change of growth rate right here so what we can see right here that the business is growing at a rate of 48 percent so further what we can do is that we can see right here that the business is growing at a rate of 48 percent so what we can do is just take this number right here and multiply it by this percentage right here and we get a new number which is 67 billion and similarly what we will do right here is take this number right here and then multiply it by this rate of change of rate of growth and we get a new number here so then what we can do right here is that equals to this number right here and add it to our previous year right here and we get a new value and 
So what we just simply did here is that we took this growth rate of 48% from the previous year and we simply applied it to the next year and then we simply added to the previous year and similarly we can do right here the same so equals to this number right here and adding this to our previous year with the growth rate of 48% and we get a new value right here so just making this column a bit bigger so this is how I think we can make a logical perception of our forward growth rate I think it was understandable right so we just took this growth rate from the previous years and then we just applied it to our forward moving years so I think it's more logical so now let's move on ahead And we can see right here that it has been uh, increasing and then getting back to some levels of 2018. So let's just do one thing. Let's just take an average. So I just clicked calculated the average and the average of these five numbers come out to be minus 4.474. So we will just use 4.4 billion dollars. So I just put here 4.4 billion dollars and I will simply just drag it across the columns so here as you see we get okay this value is in hash so we just okay so here we have now the dna as well so the next step guys is the net worth change yeah we had the capital expenditure we subtracted the capital expenditure then from the cash taxes and then we have the net worth change so for the net worth change we simply go to the cash flow statement once again and here we find the change in the net worth king and i will just put this value right here so it was a negative like you saw and just simply drag down this across the columns so with this we have our final enterprise value of 480 billion dollars plus the cash minus the debt this gives us an equity value of 734 billion dollars and finally this gives us our intrinsic value per share of 294 dollars which means we still have an upside potential of over 28 percent guys from here and that means our rate of return is over 112 percent which is quite amazing guys really and just remember that we were here quite conservative yeah we took the median EV to EBITDA multiple we also did not actually factor in the inflation rate so for example we don't know what can happen after 2020 especially this year was quite special but for example the GDP growth is more than 3% like we were discussing here and the inflation during inflation such positive cash flow cow companies are actually getting more benefit because people tend to invest more in such companies because they are much safer as a value investment and during inflation such positive good cash flow companies are well rewarded and therefore we didn't factor this let's say 5% or 6% growth rate into the EBIT or the earnings we haven't done that we were quite conservative taking the historical values so of course if for example let's just play with the EV to EBITDA multiple so like we already discussed that we took the median value so just for instance if we take the maximum EV to EBITDA for over the past 10 years because anything can happen guys yeah we are being really conservative and as of today it's just at 20.85 because we know what is happening with China and how actually the valuation of the company is getting reduced it's that's the only reason for now yeah so let's imagine if we can take this value right here so let's put this value back into our excel file and let's see the results and guys with 44 ev to ebitda multiple we see that the enterprise value has gone up to 859 billion dollars and that gives us an equity value per share of around 434 dollars guys which simply means that we have an upside potential of 89 percent and then the internal rate of return is over 137 percent so guys like i said we can still play with a lot of numbers but this video will become quite long but i hope you got the basic idea that how alibaba and many other chinese companies are actually quite undervalued to be honest like baidu jd.com as well ehang for the matter of fact so this was an example for one of the strongest businesses 
in one of the strongest economies of the world and still suffering by almost 100% below their valuation. So that's the reason why I have bought this video up for you guys to bring this stock up to your attention. And this is because the investors are getting more and more scared with investing into Chinese companies because of the authorization of the state. Regulators can impose sweeping restrictions, fines, bans on major companies, especially when it's happening in China. Like we recently experienced that China fined Alibaba of $2.8 billion for anti-competitive actions and ordered it to change various practices so that's why guys these chinese stocks are actually suffering a lot but this on the other hand also gives us a massive opportunity so take it as you will guys for me this is a really good option and i will be of course investing into alibaba for long term but again this is not any kind of a financial advice please take care of your own money please make your own decision this was just to give you a basic idea that how the cash flow and discounted cash flow system is working in favor of alibaba and we all know that alibaba is a really strong business but again please Please do your own due diligence and only if you're a patient investor, then only look forward for investing in such companies. This is not for paper hands, to be honest, guys. These stocks are for long term investors who are patient enough to see and experience all the volatility what these Chinese companies might go through and are going through. So this is only for those who are really like willing to hold their positions for two years, five years, ten years. And with that, guys, I'll wrap up today's video. I will see you in the next one. And if you like this video, then please don't hesitate to hit that like button and that subscribe button plus that notification bell icon so that you can get all the latest updates from my recent videos as soon as I release them. And if you want to be the part of our amazing Patreons community where we discuss all these talks prior to YouTube, then you are most welcome to join our family and the link will be in the description down below and please don't hesitate to use the comment section if you have any questions or if you have any suggestions or if you have any recommendations for me to make any other video on some other stocks so guys i will see you in the next one till then stay safe stay healthy and ciao